Is your city getting overrun by car traffic? This video is intended to give you some basic ideas and terminology to help make your city more livable. The examples of traffic calming and other facilities shown in this video will help you approach your city government with concepts and strategies that will work. Many towns and cities have been designed with the idea that cars come first before people. So to make improvements, you'll first want to change that mindset. One way to make a safer environment for walking and bicycling is to soften the edges of your streetscape. A rolled curb like this one provides a gentler transition between the street and the sidewalk. See the line of light-colored columns on the right side of the screen? They're called bollards. They act as a kind of fence or guardrail protecting the sidewalk from the roadway. This is an example of a bulb out. See how the sidewalk pushes out into the street a bit? This narrows the street, which makes cars slow down a bit. It also shortens the distance of the crosswalk so that pedestrians can cross the street more quickly and more easily, especially helpful for the elderly. The bulb out is one of the most effective traffic calming design ideas. This crosswalk is delineated with different types of paving. It's more aesthetic than a painted crosswalk, and it lasts longer too. In this crosswalk, textured paving is used. The bumpiness alerts drivers to slow down and look out for pedestrians. The sound the tires make on the paving warns pedestrians that vehicles are coming. A good city makes room for eccentrics. We all have our idiosyncrasies and we value the freedom to be who we are. So cities and towns should never adopt policies or attitudes that discriminate against citizens based on their transportation choices. Ed Cox is the alternate modes coordinator for the city of Sacramento, California, and has helped make many innovative changes to the streets there. Notice we have a 17 mile an hour sign. It's kind of an unusual number. We did that intentionally because we have an unusual feature coming up, this traffic circle, so we wanted to draw attention to this. So 17 mile an hour is something that people notice. This traffic calming design works by making cars slow down slightly as they veer to the side of the circle. And the effect makes the whole intersection safer and more pleasant for everyone. Well, one of the things that we feature here in the Midtown Traffic Calming was a, uh, a, what's called a half street closure. And what it does is it, it prevents people from going on one side of the, the street into the, to the neighborhood. The other side uh, is open for people to leave out and it diverts the traffic around the, the residential areas. These bollards are decorated with motifs that reflect local species of trees. This is an intersection in downtown Eugene, Oregon that features several excellent traffic calming designs. Here's another example of a bulb out. Again, you see how it narrows the street slightly. And this one has nice plantings in it too. Here's an example of a raised crosswalk. It has several virtues. It calms the traffic by acting as a gentle speed bump. It also allows pedestrians to cross the street without having to step up or down off the curb. This is especially good for wheelchair users. Here's another look at a raised crosswalk. See how the roadway rises and then becomes flush with the sidewalk. This one provides a nice, wide, at-grade crossing for pedestrians. Here's another example of bollards, which here, again, act as a kind of buffer between the pedestrian and the street. 
These ones are nicely placed and form a kind of gateway structure. When you're on foot or on a bike, you notice things more closely. So to make your city more bicycle and pedestrian friendly, you might actually consider adding some new public art. Good public art engages people, stimulates them, and can provide a sense of place. This tower represents the season's spring and is one of four towers in downtown Eugene, Oregon, each one representing a season. Don't forget to put in bike racks. These hoop styles shown here are one of the best designs. And make sure that the racks are installed near the front door of the building they serve. The corner grocery store is the single most important business in a neighborhood and is often the social hub of a good mixed-use development. Mixed-use means putting residences and businesses in the same building, in this case, houses above, shops below. That way people can live within walking distance of many of their basic needs. Bike paths connect people to nature. This is the River Trail in Eugene, Oregon along the Willamette River. It runs right through town and is only a half mile from downtown. It provides a route which can be used for recreation and transportation since it has many connectors to neighborhoods and business districts. Well-designed bike facilities, which also are well-promoted, become popular amenities for residents and tourists. People need to know how to get to a bike path and where it leads, so good signage is a bike path necessity. This beautiful suspension bridge offers safe crossing for bikes and pedestrians. Often the cost of building such bridges can be offset by attaching utility lines, such as electricity, water, or steam, to the underside of the bridge. The presence of kids is a good indication that you've created a safe bicycling environment. Seniors are another good indicator. This is Ruth Bascom, former mayor of Eugene and a major proponent in getting this river trail system built. Many people that bicycle do it for reasons of their own health. We, we know that exercise is so important for longevity and for just general good health. So the fact that you're providing something that can serve uh, as transportation and at the same time as a health benefit is important. This old man, Frank, takes care of this magnificent old oak tree. The tree is in the middle of the street and produces a traffic calming effect. When road users approach the tree, they must slow down just a bit in order to veer to the side of the tree. The tree's presence helps deter people from speeding, but it is not an annoying obstacle. On the contrary, it is a spectacular living sculpture right within arm's length. The tree belongs to the neighborhood. Everyone knows the tree. Frank takes care of the tree's leaves and is therefore an important community figure. Frank is an elder of the community. He's 90 years old and has been in the neighborhood for 20 years. By being in a public place, caring for the tree, his presence reminds everyone who passes by how important it is to appreciate and care for nature. Working right there in the street makes him very approachable and available to chat with anyone who passes by and wishes to glean wisdom from his life's experience.
By adopting some of the design ideas in this video, you'll be making your town or city more than just a place to drive through. You'll be making it a place to be. One way to make a safer environment for walking and bicycling is to soften the edges of your streetscape. A rolled curb like this one provides a gentler transition between the street and the sidewalk. See the line of light-colored columns on the right side of the screen? They're called bollards. They act as a kind of fence or guardrail protecting the sidewalk from the roadway. This is an example of a bulb out. See how the sidewalk pushes out into the street a bit? This narrows the street, which makes cars slow down a bit. It also shortens the distance of the crosswalk so that pedestrians can cross the street more quickly and more easily, especially helpful for the elderly. The bulb out is one of the most effective traffic calming design ideas. This crosswalk is delineated with different types of paving. It's more aesthetic than a painted crosswalk, and it lasts longer too. In this crosswalk, textured paving is used. The bump Is your city getting overrun by car traffic? This video is intended to give you some basic ideas and terminology to help make your city more livable. The examples of traffic calming and other facilities shown in this video will help you approach your city government with concepts and strategies that will work. Many towns and cities have been designed with the idea that cars come first before people. So to make improvements, you'll first want to change that mindset. Modes coordinator for the city of Sacramento, California and has helped make many innovative changes to the streets there. Notice we have a 17 mile an hour sign. It's kind of an unusual number. We did that intentionally because we have an unusual feature coming up, this traffic circle, so we wanted to draw attention to this. So 17 mile an hour is something that people notice. This traffic calming design works by making cars slow down slightly as they veer to the side of the circle, and the effect makes the whole intersection safer and more pleasant for everyone. Happiness alerts drivers to slow down and look out for pedestrians. The sound the tires make on the paving warns pedestrians that vehicles are coming. A good city makes room for eccentrics. We all have our idiosyncrasies and we value the freedom to be who we are. So cities and towns should never adopt policies or attitudes that discriminate against citizens based on their transportation choices. Ed Cox is the alternate